And we're recording. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah, Johnny Nelson won a WBU heavy, heavyweight title. So when Fraser says, that I want I want to be like Johnny, when, when he said, I want to be like Johnny Nelson, I'm the new, I want to be the new Johnny Nelson, it threw me because it's something that you want to hear. You hear people say, you know, you know Sam Eggington's the new Carl Froch or Spider Richards is the new John Conte or whatever. You don't hear people say, I, I, I want to be like Johnny Nelson when I get bigger. It's not something people say, is it? No, it definitely isn't. Um, because Johnny Nelson couldn't tie a ticket, could he? So he couldn't, he, he couldn't do 40 tickets. A, a professional boxer couldn't do 40 tickets. And he weren't doing 100 tickets when he were a world champion for seven years. So that I think... Obviously, his style weren't very good, were it, really? No, he wasn't entertaining. But uh, but good luck to Johnny Nelson with his job at Sky, because they're going to have to shoe on him out there, aren't they, mate? He's never going to leave, is he? No, he's part of the furniture. Yeah, Jason Cunningham against Tete, Zalano Tete. A lot of people are running around saying that Steffi's throwing him under a bus and that a load of fat money will be going on Cunningham to get put to Kip. What do you think? You know what? Everybody thought Tete was a monster uh, when he beat... Which British wise did he beat again? Was it Paul Butler? Yeah, Blue. Yeah, I think so, yeah. But he's... Not, uh, not him to be, uh, he put one of them into orbit, didn't he? One of them. He did. I think it might have... It might have been... But it was like a surprise win, wasn't it? And he went on this good reign. Then he lost to Casimiro. That's a good fighter. I just don't really know what to make of Tete. Like, is he good or has it been, you know, was he a bit of a surprise and he got matched well? Because he was with Frank for a while, wasn't he? Where after that, yeah. after we get options with him. But I think Cunningham's probably going to lose that fight. But I'm not actually sure how good Tete is. But I think it's not really a fight that's going to. Yeah, if Cunningham wins, which the odds are very slight, then great. But I just don't think it's a well match fight for Cunningham. I bet Steffi will be sweating, waiting on his check off brick top. <laughs> Cordina, do you think he'll meet Zelfa down the line? Well, hopefully. I think I think it was a good fight for Cordina, I think. It's another not... in-house fight that Eddie's not making, though, isn't it? I'm not sold on Zelfa, but yeah, I mean, this has been the thing about Matchroom for a while, hasn't it? Which is, they have all these fighters in different divisions, they sign them and they never fight against each other. They just never face each other. I mean, how many light heavyweights did they have at one point? The fact that they made Richards fight against Guazzi was a shock to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eddie going on about Tank Davis all the time. I mean, to be honest with you, mate, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if he's stalking Tank Davis because every interview and I seem to be mentioning Tank Davis because is it because Tank's red hot at the moment? Well, Tank's out of a contract with um, um, Mayweather promotions. Mayweather, yeah, yeah. They're all sniffing Bobby. around. Oh, Bob Arum, aren't they? Eddie. But also, you know, Tank's a Showtime fighter and will continue probably to be a Showtime fighter. He's an Al Heyman fighter. So if anything, he goes to PBC rather than anybody else. But why would, where would Eddie put Tank on? Like, what, the Zone US? Like, where would he put him on? Eddie's thinking he can get him on the Zone to fight against Ryan Garcia. And they can make that, man. But again, why wouldn't you just sign a golden boy for one fight or, or bring Ryan Garcia on to showtime? Yeah. Mm. I saw we all know what happened when Canelo fought against Plant, mm. who was a showtime fighter. Espinosa doesn't want to deal with Teddy. PBC don't want to deal with Teddy. So Canelo went over the road. So I'm sure they can get... Ryan Garcia on to uh, Showtime if they need to. I saw Big Leonard Ellaby high five in Ryan Garcia at ringside. Did you see it on fight? 
Yeah, they I saw Ryan Garcia bet 20 grand uh, with Spence that Ryan Garcia said, oh, Raleigh's going to knock him out. And Spence said, all right, let's bet 20 grand. And so Errol Spence trying to get some of his Ferrari money back that he wrote on. <laughs> <laughs> judging, by, judging by his gold change, he doesn't need that money. No, no. Uh Gay men in boxing, Rico, do you think they'll come out? Or do you think, because it's a macho sport, they won't? I mean, you had Isa Cruz. Um, you also had, obviously, uh, what's it called? Emilio Griffin. There's a book about him by Don McCall. Yeah, he's obviously... Uh, you know what? People should be wherever they are, and then just people should have... I hope somebody does come out in boxing. I think it will be probably good, I mean... Especially in Britain, no. We've had obviously Griffin, and then he's had he's a cruise. Because what does he matter? You can fight or you can't fight. Yeah, do you think there? Do you think there is gays in boxing, and they want to come out, but the 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 then because of what people are thinking that. I think there's in every. I mean, look, if you can't really statistically say that there's only been why is there two active footballers, and that's a sport that's more global and it's bigger. I mean, odds would say, numbers would say there definitely is, but then people just don't. And maybe it's the environment in the gym. Maybe it's some of these old school coaches. Maybe it's just society. And the average boxing fan isn't the most forward thinking and accommodating, are they? So maybe they think it would impact their ticket sales or something else. Because in boxing, the other thing is, you are your own brand, like you are your own entity. You have to sell your own tickets. You have to get TV networks to be interested in you. You have to get promoters to be interested in you. It's very different to a team sport because you're part of a team, right? And the team can support you. And, you know, like with that lad that came out from Blackpool, you know, Blackpool was supportive. The football governing bodies were supportive. I mean, if somebody came out in British boxing, for example, I don't think the board would do anything, for one. And also, if they weren't a superstar, it might be harder for them to get signed with certain promoters or certain managers. So it, it makes it more difficult. But again, I think it's 2022. I mean, society needs to move on. It shouldn't really be a thing that... It shouldn't really be a thing if somebody does come out that we should be surprised or make a big deal of it or, you know, or they should be treated different as a boxer. If they can fight in the ring, they can fight in the ring. You think, I agree. Do you think that boxing's not moved on in the last 30 years? No, because even if you think, I mean, look, we've got a bit of female boxing interest, but you still have a lot of promoters that won't touch female boxers and you still have a lot of, I mean, Credit to anywhere credit is due is actually done a good service to female boxing, but a lot of these promoters just don't work with female boxers. And, you know, female boxers don't have the same opportunities. Whereas when you look at the UFC, females are headlining cards. Females are, female fights are just as entertaining as male fights. And, you know, female fighting in the UFC is something that's widely accepted and followed and interested in. At one point in the UFC, I mean, Ronda Rousey was the biggest star in the sport. Yeah, bigger than McGregor at one point, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Um, whereas, you know, whereas if you think about boxing, we had that Katie Taylor against Serrano event, which looked like a really good event and was well attended. But Katie Taylor's like, she's one in a million or one in a billion in terms of like her popularity. But then when you look at fighters like Natasha Jonas she's relatively well known amongst boxing fans in the UK but if you if you compare the fight she's been in to a lot of the male fighters and the profile the male fighters get and the value that she brings in the ring I mean I'd r much rather watch Natasha Jonas fight against a decent opponent than I would watch 90% of the British fight male fighters there's no question about that for me I'm sure you agree with that. The Natasha Jones is better in the ring and more entertaining than 90% of the British male fighters. Yeah, she's got a nice smile. <laughs> Plus, Terry likes her. <laughs> I mean, Terry's podcast always does something like that. 
most lads in the in, in these days have got uh well me, it, well in my day you have a picture of Sheena Easton on your wall. Terry's got one of Tasha Jonas. What was that in the nineteen twenties, Ross? Nineteen twenties, nineteen seventies. I had a picture of Sheena Easton on the wall. <laughs> we hadn't gone. <laughs> Remember Sheena Easton? Yeah. The Scottish singer. I had a para for set one as well, though. Uh, let's have a look. Khan's retired. Brooks retired, so the same. But I've heard a little whisper that for rate money, Kel Brook could fight again. You know, for, for uh, eight figures. Hmm. Eight figures, right. Uh, sure. I mean, I see people like Chris Eubank Jr. and others calling out Kel Brook, and I find that um, just a bit silly in my view. And, yeah. um, and what I mean by that is that Chris Eubank Jr.'s two weight classes above him, even box three weight classes above him. Yeah. Um, it's just a bit silly to try and call out somebody like Kel Brook that's retired. And he had his moment. I think it's perfect time for him to retire. Amir should have probably retired a while ago. He didn't look half the fighter he was back in the day in that fight against Brook. So I think it's good that he's retired. But I think we all also have to give Amir a lot of credit for having an amazing career in terms of who he's fought, making the profile in the US, uh, winning multiple world titles, win beating multiple world champions. So on paper, if you look at Amir Khan's career, him and probably Froch have the best careers of the modern British fighters. Would you agree? Yeah. Amir Khan, Froch, Lennox Lewis, and Carl Zaghi are only ones that have got 10 wins plus. Yeah. World champions. Fury's got four, Joshua five, but they, they reckon the goats. They're nowhere near. Can you? I mean, I've got uh, Julian coming on tonight but he's took some sticking comments section this week because he said that Lennox beats Fury so some of the emails I've had over that comment that Julian said is unbelievable he's coming back on tonight to have his say no I think, actually I'll, I'll back him up I think Lennox uh, I'll say Lennox's CV have you been through Lennox's CV Lennox is the favourite against Fury I mean it's a, it's a close fight but Lennox people forget how good Lennox was Lennox is Lennox six foot five and a half on him. And Fury's not six nine. I, I I know for a fact he's not six nine. You know that, don't you? Yeah. You know all this six foot nine talk. You know it's the biggest load of tosh ever. You know that, don't you? Right. He's six foot seven, mate. He's not six foot nine. He's just a touch above six foot seven. You have to add things things on. It's like we were eight stone weight loss at the moment. I heard him come out with eleven stone the other day in an interview. Driving the Ferrari a bridge that's now 270 mile an hour, isn't it? It just the story takes on a life of its own, doesn't it? On and he never and he says that people should never drink alcohol, and then we see videos of him on holiday. Listen, mate, what have I said for the last two years on here? They can't lie straight in bed, none of them. But behind the scenes, pissing the pants at everybody because for for for, for pouring it out, they're, they're having time in their lives, aren't they? <laughs> But, uh, Lennox is a top 10 heavyweight of all time. Tell you my top 10. Heavyweights. Top 10 heavyweights. Well, for yeah. me, you know, you, Ali, Larry Holmes, Joe Lewis, Lennox Lewis, George Foreman. Marciano. Marciano, 49. And and only, I know he only had six wins of world champions, and he, he'd have been beat eventually. We got injured. Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis is in there, Ali, Lennox Lewis. I mean, you'd have to put Riddick Bowe in there, wouldn't you? Maybe in top 15. His career no, I'd, put, I'd put Holyfield rather than Bowe, to be yeah, honest. Because for longevity. Yeah, and just, you know, he, he had some really good fights. Um, Junk cheat, though, wasn't he? Yeah, but we can't, when do we start, like, if we start removing heavyweights? There were drug cheats, yeah, there'd be nobody fucking fighting. Tyson, it? I'd probably, it's a tricky one with Tyson. He doesn't actually have that many good wins. Yeah. Uh, Jack Johnson. 
Jack Johnson, yeah, you you had you had my thing over there. I think I still might have it here, my top ten. Jack Johnson, uh, Joe Frazier, he dominated for over three years. Yeah, Joe Frazier's a one of top five, definitely. But this is the thing: you can't put Fury or any of the modern fighters in that at the moment. So Lennox is in that list, but you can't put any of the modern fighters in there. You could, you want I mean, to Fury. You know what he needs, Fury, right? Listen, everybody says you're slagging him off because you're Peters, mate. Look, he's a masterful boxer. I've seen him boxing close up. I've seen Tyson Fury spar Joe Joyce at 28 stone, right? And he just stood at middle at ring. Normally, he'd be bouncing on his feet. He just stood at middle at ring. They were doing that slipping and sliding thing he does. You know, where he doesn't move his feet, but yeah. his body's, like, bending all over, like... Yeah. Like the plastic man in the Fantastic Four, whatever. And Joe Joyce couldn't lay a glove on him. And I thought, then, God, he's got this defensive thing off to a fine art. Do, do you know? Do you know what I mean? But I just think his CV lacks a name. You can't just put Vladimir and Wilder on there, can you? And a blown up Steve Cunningham fighting a cruiserweight, blown up to Ebby, that were life and death fighting in his late thirties. He can't just have them three names in his record because Vladimir were in his 40th year. Cunningham were an old man and Wilder were in his mid to late 30s but only one trick pony bought the biggest puncher in boxing at the time. But you can't say his CV matches Lennox has when Lennox yeah. has beat 14 champions. And another thing, Tyson's got an handful of wins but he needs more wins. Ergovic, Joyce, Joshua... There's three for a start. Usyk, there's four wins. Maybe if he could fight all them twice, there's eight. He'd still be shorter than Lennox, wouldn't he? Because it's not Tyson Fury's fault that the year is weak, is it? <coughs> no, but that's how you judge boxers, unfortunately. Like, um, it's very hard to judge boxers without looking at how good their competition is. So I think one way is, as you always say, how many world champions... Uh, have they beaten current and former? Yeah. The other the other way is to do um, is to look at how many Hall of Famers they've beaten. I think that's where like fighters like Ali and Fraser really shine through is because they've beaten so many Hall of Famers. But then if you go down the route that oh I will decide based on my eye test uh, who's the top ten and how good fighters are then you subject them unless you're watching really studying the film and you know you're watching all these fights of all these fighters and then ranking them based on that but most people have seen Fury so recently they haven't watched the other fighters that they just guess they just sort of they have a massive recency bias where they end up going oh Fury's the best because look how I saw him take apart Wilder a few times whereas they haven't watched Joe Fraser Jack Johnson you know they haven't watched Holyfield Jack thing. Johnson was ruthless, wasn't he? I mean, he used to take white women up at state line, then he pissed up. Yeah. Driving yeah. back in the day. Do, do you remember that famous Jack Johnson story where he was speeding in his car and the police pulled him over and said, He's speeding. Here's a hundred, it's a hundred dollar fine. And he said, I'll give you two hundred. I'll be I'll be coming back this way. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't have gone down too well, would it? Uh I feel like we've got too many gimmicks in sport at the moment. You know, like Ebony Bridges, Johnny Fisher, Conor Ben, Cam well, Campbell, Hands of Stone, Hatton. I think, I think it's less those guys because they're actual boxers, but the fact that you have Ricky Hatton coming back, you have Tommy Fury, a future world champion, probably fight against Jake Paul soon. You have all these celebrity, that guy from Geordie Shaw, Aaron Banks, or whatever his name is, him coming and fighting. You have this sort of thing where celebrities are fighting on the Jeff Boxing card, and the whole YouTube boxing thing hasn't been set, like it's not being separated at the moment from real boxing. Yeah. It's becoming real boxing, and that's becoming the mainstream boxing, part of mainstream boxing. I'm less worried about the people that are built up and gimmicky than I am about the fact of YouTubers becoming part of boxing. 
what do you think to Dennis getting 50 odd debuts out in a year and uh, you know with 20 odd show 24 shows in a year and 50 odd debuts do you, you know, that's a record that going back in time that 50 yeah. odd debuts from a promoter in a year that's unbelievable isn't it do you feel that everybody wants to take boxing up or do you think that people are saying well if you pass an eye test and a brain scan pay you 700 and odd quid you're a professional boxer you feel that that's wrong now and that people are just doing it to make ends meet and get a few quid and that somebody's going to end up on slab? Well, I'm not sure they're going to make any ends meet. I think it's more an ego thing, isn't it? You can sell, t- you can sell tickets and you can tell your mates you're a professional boxer. So I think that's where I'm not sure Dennis is in the wrong here. I think it's actually the board. The board needs to be more stringent about who gets a professional boxing fight. And it's not like you and me could put pair of football boots on and pay a certain amount of money and go and play in a conference, you know, conference team or yeah. League Two team. Like, that's essentially what's happening here. If you've got the money and you've played a bit of sports, you've done a bit of boxing in the gym, you've done a few white qualified, you can turn pro without any tests, any other things. And it's because of the board's greed, isn't it? And that's where the problem is. It's not Dennis's problem, it's the board. And that's where the health and safety issues come in when you have people who are not trained, fighting, you know, are not professional boxers, haven't done the amateurs. I think to Terry's, um, one of the points he's made previously on this channel is that you should probably have a certain amount of amateur fights before you can turn pro. Because at least that way, we know where you're at. If you've lost 10 amateur fights, you know, white call is very different, then how can you turn pro, right? If you've had 10 amateur fights, lost them all, how can you be a pro? Whereas when you've got, well, I'm not going to mention names and that. Two or three white collar, two or three white collar fights. Oh, you've got that Dale Arrowsmith that Dennis keeps digging up. What is he, two and 70 odd or summer? If you've had 70 odd fights or whatever, you've had 50 odd fights, two wins, you're not a fucking boxer, are you? You can't box eggs. Am I right? No. There's people on here I've seen, Nort and 22. Who the fuck is licensing somebody? If you've had 22 losses and no wins, you're not a fucking boxer, are you? Why do these old bastards at the board have to sit around a big long table and make these career decisions about other people's careers? Yeah, we're going to let him fight again. He's lost 22 on shot. Can we have a second on that, Your Honour? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, he's going to fight. Grown fucking men who've never had a fight in their life, although Robert Smith... Uh, uh, were, were well, the board's incentivised. The board's incentivised to have as many boxes as possible so they can get beat. Yeah, right? hey, that, yeah, exactly, but who's governing these fuckers? Nobody. I mean, you know what? The problem is people could just go and fight on another board. You don't have to fight on a British boxing board of control. Well, Anyways, my friend... I need to get to work. No problem. It's been good speaking with you. Everybody make sure you like and subscribe and keep supporting the movements. Porky yeah. with his new teeth. Looking great as always. Should be. Cause me more aggravation. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I don't want to go through that again, mate. What I went through. Upper jawbone, lower sinus, can all sorts of issues. But I bought, they were good. Cosmetic B, very, very good. Good quality, but I won't want to go through it again. What happens if I get too fake now? Do I have to fly to fucking Turkey <laughs> to catch me warrant to me warrant, warrant whatever guarantee? Thirty yeah. year. I wouldn't be going back there every six months. <laughs> Anyhow, my friend. Hey, listen. You have a great day, Rico. I know you're a stickler for uh, your job and that. So you take care, and I hope you're well. We'll catch up soon. All right. Catch you on your next week, Rico. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Brilliant, mate. Take care. Bye. Company man, Rico, there. It's uh, time, is it? Yeah. One minute to nine. Rico's uh, just about to log on in here at his office, working from home, I think he is today. But I hope he's well. Everybody else is well. Hope you're well, Terry. Hope you're well, Frank Berry, Frank in Berry, Dave in Berry, Danny in Berry, is it? What about Matt Bowes in Berry? Whatever happened to him, Matt Bowes? Ah, no, you're still a little troll on social media, Matt. Sending me best to you, Matt. Hope you're well. 
I'll meet up sometime. Peace out.